Meersdorf. Thank you so much for talking to us on Talk to Police. So this interview will be part of my series on religious behavioral modification camps. I've done a show okay. with David Wernsman, who was forcibly sent by his Christian parents to one of these schools, Escuela Caribe, yes. down in the Dominican Republic, and was the subject of the documentary Kidnapped for Christ, which I'm sure you've seen. Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> and I also interviewed Jody Hobbs of the SIA organization, which helps yes. those who have come out of these camps and who've suffered abuse there. Mm -hmm. So, Gil, you and your sister Daphne were sent to a school at Caribe, and this was between the sort of 1986, 1989 time? Yeah, I was uh, sent there. Uh, actually, I was first sent to Marion, Indiana, which is the, uh, the, uh, um, the headquarters, I guess. Oh from from the uh, school you have new horizons youth ministries which is headquartered in uh, indiana mayor in indiana then you have a square de caribe in dominican republic yeah uh i was brought to marion i believe september of 1986 so i was 17 at the time the person that recommended uh new horizons youth ministry sorry was D uh, dr mark zakheim and he was friends with uh, Tim Blossom, and he was a recruiter for the school. I say school, but for the church in the Chicago area. Okay, there's a couple other uh, people at that time that when came down to his school at Caribe, they mentioned his name, and I said, yeah, I know him also, and my father knows him. You know, uh, Dr. Zakheim was Jewish also. Right. So this was a big, big conflict you know, for, for a Jew uh, to send another Jew or recommend another Jew to go to a Christian missionary. Yes, it is a bit uh, odd. Yeah. How I grew up in the Jewish religion, that's a, a big, big conflict. You know, if you think about uh, what the Nazis did, what happened in uh, Spain, the Inquisition, and so forth. Mm. Normally, Jewish people don't do that, you know, uh, send you know, Jews to, to missionary schools. So uh, I was sent there, I said September 86, 17 years old. November, October, I ran away from Marion because they were hinting that they were gonna send me to Escuela Caribe in Dominican Republic. And what I learned from the Escuela Caribe, from the people coming back from Escuela Caribe that it was uh, the last stop really you know it's uh no rules it's a third world country and so forth yeah but uh so i ran away and within two days i was uh, up in milwaukee i called my parents number and they said the most important thing and the worst thing you can tell to another jew you don't belong to us you belong to them you know which is uh basically uh you, you don't belong to our family, you belong to their family. And uh, so that was very, very harsh. So I stayed the evening uh, at their house, and this is when I saw my sister Daphna for the first time in over a year. Uh, the year previously I was in Israel, and uh, I returned to the United States in June, okay? And so I saw my sister uh, then, and this is very important uh, in the chronicle order of what, what occurred in the ne next three years and later. So I agreed with my father, you know, that uh, I go back there to Marion, Indiana. And he said, no, no, you, you, you will stay in Marion and finish school there, you know, and uh, it's going to create base not, not for you, really. So uh, you, you believe them, you know. Uh, they took me back, and uh, I, uh, I received a nice little beating for for running away yeah so um after that it got a lot harsher and the favorite thing they they like to say is uh when they're about to uh discipline you they say it's time to come to jesus you know you know for anyone who doesn't know what are the aims of these schools these so-called behavioral modification camps or churches or ministries or whatever you want to call them there's a big difference between you know, people understand the boot camp system in the United States, mm. which is basically controlled by the government. You know, they, there's private institutions that run these boot camps and so forth and behavior modification uh, schools, yeah. 
that they're controlled by the United States government. Also, the, the, the uh, school that they had in uh, Marion, Indiana was controlled by the government because they had a contract with the court system in Indiana. This is New Horizons, wasn't it? Yeah, New Horizons is the, the, the mother company. Yeah. Yeah, but the biggest problem with churches uh, is they can say we're not we're we're tax exempt. We're a church. You can't, you know, have information about this person. You can't see how much money we make off the mm -hmm. of the tuitions or so forth. Yeah. Mostly, the stories I hear is that uh, the child is perceived to be uh, misbehaving, hanging around with the wrong crowd, or doing something unchristian or ungodly. So, <laughs> uh, why why were you sent there? Do you think what why what was the story behind that? I was given to them. I wasn't sent there. I was just given to them. You know, in the end, from what my my father said to me, you know, uh, I was adopted anyway. So the main reason they sent me was uh, A, I had a, a discipline problem. You know, I really did have, a di at that point, a discipline problem. Yeah, I didn't want to finish high school. I didn't care about finish hi high school. You know, I was already at 17. My plan was to get to 18 and then do what I wanted to, you know, which was not really mature. At, you know, it's not mature at all. You need to finish school and so forth, yeah. But that was their, their main goal, you know. Uh, they told me, um, when I was in Escuela Caribe, I asked him why, you know, I was already over 18 years old. And I told him, I said, why, why did you send me here? Why didn't you in some place in the United States, you know? You know, I told him this is a Christian ministry. It's not, it's a church, you know? Mm. They said there was no other place in the United States that would take me, yeah? And the reason is because they wanted me to be kept in a place over the age of 18, you know? And so... In the United States, against the law, unless you sign a piece of paper, you know, at the age of 18 that, you know, you can stay in some place, yeah, then it's illegal. And that was the the purpose for Escuela Caribe. You know, you're in a third world country and uh, they can do Which whatever Which is exactly what happened to David Wernsman from uh, Kidnap for Christ. He oh, was yeah. there beyond 18 and he had to have, oh, yeah. friends actually had to rescue him from that place. Yeah. Try, try to spring him from that place. Exactly, exactly. I recommend... You know, I, I was thinking about this last evening, you know. I recommend anybody that is, now it's called Crosswinds, but anybody that is told that they're going down to Escuela Caribe or the, the new name that they have now, once they hit Miami, yeah, make problems before you get on that jet. If you get on the jet, on the airline, just start screaming, do whatever you do. Do not get on that airplane. If you start screaming, if you start making problems, the pilot will not let you on that airplane. Do that. Don't go down there. You know, that's the worst thing you can do. You know, what, what happened to David was illegal, and I don't understand why the American embassy didn't uh, step in. Gil, these camps, they're, they're not just big on enforcing Christian values and behavior, but on discipline in general. Yes. And they enforce discipline in some pretty harsh and unusual ways. So can you yes. talk about some of the rules, regulations, punishments that you and the other kids had to face when yeah. you were there? Uh, I can go at what happened in the 80s. Uh, the rules were, uh, basically it's a, a level system. If you look at the military, it's the same thing. You know, private, corporal, sergeant, first level, second level, third level. Basically, when you're new there, they don't all. Even when you get to level five, they always keep an eye on you. They always keep tabs where you are at all times, you know. And their biggest fear, I think, is you running away or doing something unchristian or something like that. Um, but uh, for the first two levels, until level two, you're not allowed to talk to other people. You can only talk to people that are higher of rank. You know, you're not allowed to f talk to females. You know, it's, uh, you always have to uh, be arm's length to the house father or the group leader, the group leader, big brother that they had there. So you have to go up different levels depending on how well they think you've behaved and what oh, you've yeah. achieved. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. They'll, they'll take you. It's not that hard to to get up to level four if you if you think about it. You know, if you can 
if you know how to clean, you pay the, obey the orders, what they say. You say yes, this, that, everything, yeah? So zero is, zero is no good, and four is that's where they want you to be. Leadership. They want you on five off points, but four is leadership. That's where I was for level four leadership for over two years from, you know, all, the whole time I was there, over two years. And they'll keep you there just to play with you. It's a mind game, a lot of psychological mind games, because they knew I wanted to get off points and I wanted to get out of the house, you know, but they wouldn't allow that, you know. And one time they teased me with level five, you know, and they had uh, one of the students in the house vote against me getting level five. You know, it's all, it's all a little game that they play. You know? Now, David told me, he said, this place is a, quote, haven for sociopaths. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yeah, I do. Uh, you know, if you look at uh, uh, mental health and so forth, and if you research, uh, like, cults and so forth, Phil Redwine, which was the director at my time in Escuela Caribe, was definitely a psychopath. He definitely had mental issues, definitely had uh, sadistic, very sadistic. He had mental, he has mental issues. Jeff Seabrook also, he was there most of the time. Also, he, he had a good heart, but also he loved, they all loved the uh, control. Okay, yeah. these people, these people, none of them went to the military ever. They all came from a, a, a Christian background. They all went to Christian colleges if they went to college. And they think that what they learned, you have to learn. You understand? Right. And for them to, to love control, you know, it's a bit psychopathic. You know, they, they love the, the discipline. They love to deal out discipline. They loved abusing children. Uh, they were children, the, the people, but I was already an adult, you know? And to just to play head games with people, it's not normal, you know? You know, it's not uh, some mental institution, something like that. You know, it's a, it's a ministry. That's it. That's a ministry. It's a church. Correct. A lot of them had severe, more problems, pedophilia, uh, 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 physical abuse, verbal abuse. You know, it's not, uh, you know, they're not normal. At that time, and I believe, even now, I believe it probably happens also. Because once you, you're, you're down there, it's a private property. No one can come there. The police are not going to come there. The embassy is not going to, even if the embassy comes there, which they never came when I was there, yeah, the new crosswinds have a letter from the embassy that everything's okay there, yeah? They're yeah. not going to let them on the property. Just like David, David had, they had to get a court order to release David out of there to go on the property and take David out, you know? And uh, it's a bit, uh, it's, uh, if you look back at it, it's full of uh, missionaries that had a bit of a problem in the head, you know? To do this for $100 and $200 a, uh, a month, you know, you have to, a bit of a problem. So, um, Most of the behavioral modification schools that I know of, they're run by Christians. And I know Escuela Caribe is or or was a Christian-run camp. So were you yeah. and your sister, who have a Jewish background, treated differently to the other kids who were sent there? Um, did that impact things in a particular way? When I was there a while in Escuela Caribe, I told them, you know, I'm Jewish. I want to go to synagogue, you know, this and that sometimes. You know, they said, don't, don't even think about it. Perfect. Don't even think about it. You're here. And that's it. You can become a Christian. That's all, you know. So you, you know, if you're, if say, if you're Muslim or or uh, another religion, you come down there, they're going to have a bad, uh, a problem with that. Uh, my sister also one time, one time, her house father, when she was new there, she said to him, "Yeah, I'm Jewish," you know, and she he said, "No, no, now you're Christian," you know. So it's a big did problem. Your parents know, did your parents know about this, that this would happen? Oh, yeah, yeah. Listen, my, my parents, I don't even call it, you know, that's the, the word I have for them. I have no contact with them at all. But they knew about this because you know, they came in down and visited. When my sister was there and I was there, they came down and visited us, yeah? And I told them, sure, I'll tell. I, you know, I told them what happened, you know, this and that. And that's a big mistake. Because once you tell your, your parents that are visiting you what's happening there, first of all, the, the staff say it's out of reality, and then, then you'll come to Jesus again, you know? It comes a nice little beating after that, 
So, so your Jew uh, Jewish parents didn't mind you coming to Jesus? Am I getting that right? Yeah, I guess so, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's very, that's pretty very disgusting. strange. Pretty, 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 pretty disgusting. You know, you have a number one in the Jewish religion. The the female is basically the most important uh, person in the religion because the the blood th flows for the female. If you're born from a Jewish mother, you're automatically a Jew. As a male Jew, it doesn't really matter. Female is very important, and for them to send my sister there to keep me there. They sent their, their, her there to keep me there. So Daphna didn't have any particular problems? Well, hell no. She, had, she was a straight-A student. She hmm. never got in trouble with law. She was a straight-A student, you know, nonviolent, never yelled, nothing like that, yeah? What's really funny is uh, when I was there for maybe half a year, they said my sister ran away from home. They said she ran away from home because uh, she said somebody raped her. And she ran away from home. And they said, she, they said for last year she was saving up her money, you know, to run away to California. Three months or half a year later, she's down there in Dominican Republic, pregnant. Okay. Now, Tim Blossom came down there with my sister. He talked to me. And he told me that my sister Daphna ran away to California. She was in some, some uh, satanic sect in LA, got pregnant by them, became a junkie, a heroin junkie. Yeah, listen to this is, this is Became a heroin junkie, yeah. So what my parents did, they sent, sent her to Mexico for two weeks to kick uh, heroin, uh, the addiction from heroin. If you can find a program that makes a person kick the addiction from heroin in two weeks, guess what? You're going to be a billionaire. Okay? Yeah, it does not exist. It does not exist. Yeah. And so this is what I think really happened. They gave my sister to them because maybe she made the problem to my parents that I was with these Christians. My sister was highly intelligent. Until she was murdered, she was a highly intelligent person. Yeah. I think when they had her, one of the, the people up there raped her, and she became pregnant by him. And then they sent her back down to Escuela Caribe. This is my thought. When she was pregnant down there in Escuela Caribe, when, when she was almost at her due date, they sent her back to Marion, Indiana. She had her baby there. And then what they did? They sent her back to Escuela Caribe. Now, my parents at that time, you know, I, I confronted them when they came down again, you know. They said that the baby was given to a Jewish couple in California. They had it. And, and uh, when I returned to the United States uh, at the age of 20, basically, uh, they showed me a picture, you know, of the baby, you know, and this and that. And in my mind, I was thinking, this is, this is not correct. I don't believe it at all. You know, I believe, and information I got from students, you know, now because of the internet, that the baby was given to one of the sect members, you know, and that's it, you know, maybe as a payment for tuition because you, you, it's two children or two people in this ministry, so that's twelve thousand dollars a month. Wow. My father is a doctor, but he didn't. Uh, he can't afford twelve thousand dollars a month. So the school like Escuela Caribe, um, yeah. that was closed down because of pressure, yeah. bad reports, etc. It was then, closed then, down. It then was... Reop or reopened under a different name. I think what happened is uh, Tim, the blossom, uh, you know, all the pressure and so forth, and he gifted it to Crosswinds. And Crosswinds is a big organization. If you do the research, they own a, a bunch of uh, other things. Yeah, uh, any type of religious uh, place like that, which is not structured, you need to close them down. Because you're just asking for abuse, you know, child abuse and, and so forth, yeah. Because they're unregulated, aren't they? Oh, yeah, of course they're unregulated. There's no regulation in Dominican Republic. It's a church. They are listed as a church in Dominican Republic. The local community makes money off of them. They're not going to do nothing to them. They'll keep on going. Until the, the government, the Dominican, the government Dominican Republic does something, you know, they're going to have a big problem with these people.
And there's loads of these schools still going all over yeah. the world. And, and I think maybe yeah. on this side of the, uh, the Atlantic as well. Um, so, I mean, as far as they're concerned, what you would like to see them all closed down? Oh, yeah, sure. You know, listen, if, if, if you want a proper place of school or ministry, you have to regulate. You have to have some kind of government regulation. And if you don't have that, just close them down. You know, because uh, what's the other option? You're going to have thousands of kids going on to the street with post-traumatic stress, this and that. And what's going to happen? They're going to act out. They're going to cause problems, so forth. Yeah. So you know, what you can, need to. What uh, can people do though to, uh, to encourage people to close these down and to to make sure that this kind of uh, abuse doesn't happen anymore? What can we do? In the United States, either con contact your congressman, senator, and so forth, and uh, tell them open their eyes about these institutions or, or uh, schools and so forth. But in reality, if you look at it in reality, uh, the only thing you can really, really do is put pressure on them. In the inter now we have the internet. You can put so much pressure on organization or like this that you can close them down so fast if you want to. Just, just public opinion, so much bad uh, public opinion, you know, and they'll close them down. You know, yeah, well, what, what you've done and David has done yeah. in general by speaking to me is raising awareness. So yeah, definitely exactly. I'm sure you would encourage other people to come forth who've been through these modification camps. Yeah, of course. Of course. Even if you, you were there until the age 18, you know, come forth, you know, educate the public of what's going on. You know, it's, that's the most important thing. You know, just to, to, to uh, say, okay, you're under 18, you didn't want to go to school, and it's okay to to traumatize your life. And listen, it's going to go into adult life. It's going to affect all aspects of work, relationships, and so forth. Well, people really need to come out and tell people, tell the police, tell the government, and educate other people about these schools. Yeah. You know, because uh, and, and right now they have such a strong lobby in D.C. that uh, they keep on going. You know, you can't. Uh, and also to to uh, educate other individuals that if you want to, if you, you think you have a problem with your children, yeah, don't be stupid and pay $5,000 or $6,000 a month. Send them to the Caribbean and think they're going to live in some, you know, paradise or something like that. You know? It's just over, it's theft. It really is theft, you know, charging people five, $6,000 a month, you know, because what are you getting out of it? You know, you're getting a bologna sandwich, a little bit of chicken, you know, uh, once a day. You know, it's uh, it doesn't really help that uh, in America you've got a uh, a administration which is uh, bolstered up by the evangelical community, or probably yeah. well in favor of these kind of schools because they don't understand these kind of schools. Though they're not, yeah. they 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 believe what the say New Horizons Youth Ministry. The it's a ministry. It's a church. Yeah. And it's, say, I'm in charge of it. As head of this church, I'm telling you that these kids are lying. I'm a pastor, yeah, or I'm a, I'm a me, deacon yeah. or something <laughs> like that, right? So you're going to believe me before these people that had problems, yeah? They're, I'll tell, they're out of reality. Don't listen to these children, yeah? This is, right, you can be out of reality a little bit, but in the future, you know, it's not, uh, it's not the same, you know? There has to be a... Uh, 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 some kind of control over these churches, you know, what they're doing, you know, how they're, they're scamming people and so forth. You know, you, you saw how much uh, money they were making. I sent you the, the document, the tax yes. document. Yes. They were making a lot of money. I think the tuition, they made over a million for one year in tuition or something like that. I have to go over the document again. Okay, well, Gil, thank you so much for yeah. opening up about that. I know it's it's difficult to, to talk about, and uh, I'm sorry you had to go through all of that. But um, as I just said, uh, by speaking out on forums such as yeah. this, yeah. you can raise awareness, so you are doing your part. So thank you so much for coming on to Talk Beliefs, and maybe we'll catch up with you again okay. for an update so. in the very near future. Yeah, okay. All right. Good, Mark. Thank you.